Today I'm talking to Isanne Lewis and it's an exciting time for her because she's actually been on television and they sought her out because of uh, the birth charts that she does for babies. They asked me to do, um, I think, eight babies charts. I knew in seven and a half minutes with the intro, they probably weren't going to get through it all. But the mothers had a specific question about their child. And I think I had to give about 40 or 50 seconds to each one. And luckily that's something I can do. It's not ideal because every moment in time a birth chart contains, I think it's about 2000 um, signatures, variables in it. And one has to synthesize the whole picture of the chart and give an interpretation now, in normal circumstances, a, a birth chart, uh, it, it would be for a newborn, maybe as a gift for a, for a newborn, and therefore you're working on a child that hasn't got uh, anything that has happened to them, but you, you are giving an insight into what they're likely to be like and what their future is likely to be like for them. It's not fortune telling, you actually made that very, very clear in the interview, didn't you? Because that's a common thing people ask you. This is true. Nothing is cast in stone. And we do have free will. And I know we can abuse free will, but we often, perhaps more so, we neglect it. So when, when you're faced with uh, doing a birth chart, you, you want as much information as, as possible. So what do you ask of people uh, so that you can actually do a chart? And maybe you've got a chart that you can show us. I have indeed. And I ask for, it's like putting code coordinates into a sat nav or GPS in a way, you're getting your direction. And I'm asking for the full date of birth, including the year, the time on the clock when the baby's born, and the town, which is a longitude and latitude, but I work that out, of birth. And this is one chart. Um, this baby born today, which I think it's 11.30. And you can see how the planets are around the circle and the angles between the planets, the, the strengths and weaknesses, the flows, the link with the family line, the areas of life which are going to be significant or more significant than others for the child. And if I put this chart up, um, it's a toddler now, or more toddler, you see how the distribution, the distribution is different. Yes. So although, so, so although you, 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 you will do a chart for a newborn, uh, as on mm -hmm. the programme, uh, they, they actually uh, gave you the task of uh, two brothers. And uh, so, so that was a case of looking at their, uh, the time that they were born, but, but what they were like or what they are like today. Um, so that is, is, is quite different then. So... Just to give um, our viewers an, an idea of the sort of work that's involved in, in, in those charts then. So I calculate the chart in the first 15 years of my career, going back to 1979, there wasn't a programme, or it wasn't computers for a while, but also not a programme for astrology. And, oh, I didn't have it anyway, I know how to have it. And so I did all the mathematics for that place, longitude, latitude, time of birth, date of birth, by hand, the logarithms and so forth. When these programs came along, and nowadays I calculate that information onto the computer like I've just shown you, but the interpretation again is my own, is my own. And I'm looking at all the different ingredients. It's like what goes into a cake, if I may use that analogy, all the different things you put in to make it. And it's a very complex cake, there's lots in it. So in a way, you've got to pull all that information together. When I'm doing a chart of a baby or perhaps a child, a young adult up to 17, 18, at that point, I feel they can talk to me. But to say under the age of 17, the parents usually want to know about educational choices, any crisis points, perhaps they're experiencing one, a little bit about health. I'm not a medical astrologer, but you can see uh, some of the energies um, if they're weaker and areas of diet which would help. And how they fit in with the family line, the relationship with the father line, the mother line. And one example is the moon. Now the moon changes sign, one of the 12 zodiac signs, every two and a half days. 
And the moon sign is very much for inner world, how you respond emotionally. Are you a quick reactor, are you not? And also with the first years of life and the matriarchal line in the family, which obviously covers grandmothers and so forth going back. And that can be really helpful. And you often see a very strong link with the moon sign of a child's chart with signatures, as I call them, planets dominant ones in the parents' charts. And that can be really helpful to understand how they interact and communicate. So do people actually come to you more than once? So they might come to you when a child is uh, just born, but they might come to you later on, uh, later on just to get uh, more information or when they're facing some sort of milestone in their life? Absolutely, absolutely. I think that applies quite a lot to education which is so vital, isn't it? How we're educated. And for example, if a child is a more visual thinker, likes to reflect and is being pushed very academically and analytical kind of education, left hemisphere brain one, this can be rather, if not damaging, but worrying for the child and can bring up issues. The planet Mercury very much links with our communication, learning ability, how we adapt and rules the years, particularly from seven to 14. So the sign of the zodiac that Mercury is in, how it's aspected to other planets in the chart, are they easy or not, can tell us a lot about the best kind of education. And is the child more of a late developer? Nothing wrong with that or an early one and may slow down a bit later. And I think all those things can be really, really helpful. So turning points, where you can see in a chart where planets overhead are aspecting quite strongly to the child's birth chart can indicate not just turning points, but perhaps crises, not so much external ones, but internal ones. And to know when it's good to take a little rest, maybe that child needs more rest for a while, more creative activity instead of pushing the schoolwork. That's not always possible, I know, but it does help to be aware of that. And the parents can really help in that respect. So in many ways, I see the child's chart very much like a toolbox. It sounds rather a pedantic word, but it is a useful tool that the parent can dip into and listen back to 